Welcome to Lesson 15, User Welds. As we have seen earlier in the material commands, it's not necessary to weld a material to a member for it to be connected to a member. Simply, during the addition of material, select the member that you want to add the material to. Now, SDS2 does provide something called user welds. When a connection is generated by the system, the system will generate the welds. But let's say, for example, I would like to add welds to this plate right here that we added on this pour stop. Now, many of our users do not add a weld in model, but they simply add in the weld in 2D. But for certain cases, let's say you're working on a project where they want to estimate the amount of weld that's on the particular project, you may want to add in the weld in the model. Or let's say, for example, you're not going to be the one cleaning up this particular connection. You may also want to add in a weld to make it easier for the person who is doing the cleanup in the 2D, as we call scrub work. So where do I begin? Well, let's start off by going to our Model Weld drop-down menu and go ahead and tear that off. We can see here that we have the Add Weld and the Add Layout. The Add Layout allows you to go ahead and select points, and as you select the points, the weld will follow the points that you have selected. Kind of like having a rod. So I can actually take two pieces of material and join them together using the Add Layout, or I can just simply select points on a piece and add weld as if I had a welding rod. Let's start off by looking at the Add Weld. Select the material, and select the material that you want to weld to. Go ahead finish the command once that's all selected using the OK. Now let's start off over here with the pre-qualified weld. If you're using a pre-qualified weld, I want you to notice that we have a fillet weld right now currently. If I type in TCU4B for example, and let's go ahead and finish this off with a dash GF, you'll notice the system populates this data below. I can also come in here and make a change. Maybe I want to change it to a, a butt weld. Now I have a B U4B GF. If we look over here at the bevel groove, the system automatically selects that. If I change it from a 4 to a 5, again we'll notice that that data changes. This will become now a double weld. Once again, if I go back to 4, we see that it becomes a single weld on one side. Now you can also add in the position for this pre-qualified weld. You have the groove weld settings. You can force the system to perform a chamfer. Now again, be careful. There are some um, plasma uh, torches that can't do chamfers on these members. It might cause a problem. So anyways, you might want to check it out with your CNC. Again, the depth of the chamfer with the flare groove radius uh, fill up backup weld. Now, currently, we're not going to go ahead and use this pre-qualified weld on this first um, weld that I'm adding. We're going to be adding in a fillet weld. Now you can see the weld size, 3 16 minimum length, gap. This is between the two parts that are being joined. If the gap is bigger than what's specified here, the system won't weld the two together. You'll notice you have a setback for the left and right, and I can add in a finish symbol. For example, if I have a butt weld, I want to have a G for ground. Also, you notice that I can add in some supplementary tail text. When you're dealing with stitch weld, you'll notice that you have opposite and offset with the length and the left and right termination. Let's jump back up here. You have weld all around. This is particularly great when you're dealing with tubes. Let's say a tube uh, to a base plate. You can have it weld all the way on the outside of that tube or pipe. Inside surfaces will actually weld on the inside of that pipe, if you can get that torch in there. Um, is it going to be a field weld or a shop weld? Now this one here, one weld per segment, what it does is it'll tell the system that this is all one weld, especially when you're going around several different segments, and therefore the system will just go ahead in 2D and add in one weld symbol instead of adding multiple weld symbols at, or multiple pointers for a weld at one site location. Let's OK to close the window. Now you'll see these two blue welds here. Blue indicates that the weld will be kept if the weld turns gray, that weld will be removed when we complete the command. 
at the top left corner of the screen the system's asking you to deselect the new welds that you don't want if I take my mouse using my left mouse button on top and I say I want to keep this weld I can simply left click on it and it'll go ahead and turn off any other welds in other words they will become gray which means they will not be added when I complete this command I can of course use shift to add and I can use control to remove the weld. I'm going to go ahead and complete this. Notice the blue weld up here on top. Right click, hit OK, change all options screen, and we can see that that one weld was added. Let's come in here and add in another weld between these two pieces right here. I'm going to add in a offset weld at 3 and 12. Leave the termination at 0. Go ahead and hit OK. Again, the system's prompting me if I want to remove any of these proposed weld segments. I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. Now we can see that there is a weld on both sides and that is set to offset. Let's move to my second floor. I am going to select these two pieces of material and turn them to solid. Now, currently, this is one member right here, and this is a, another member right here. What I want to do is I want to steal the material from this piece and copy it over to this one here. Let's go ahead and utilize filters. I'm going to come down here, Material, Locate. Next, right-click, Copy Material, Insertion Point. I'm going to use my exact point. System is going to prompt me at the top left, select member to copy to, this one here. Where is my insertion point? Let's go ahead and locate. Now I can locate more than one point. I can add this along in several locations as we saw earlier with the stud, but I'm finished, so I'm either going to hit enter or right click return. Now I'm going to turn this to solid so that we can see that this material has now been attached to this particular member. Let's move on to what's called the frame command. I want to have this all butt right up against this here, against the flange on the toe and on the web. I'm going to go up here to my model material. Then I'm going to go down to the frame command, locate the material and which material I want to frame to. Go ahead and hit OK on this screen we now see that this is all framed right up to that other piece. Let's finish this weld segment with the add layout. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to simply select add layout again the material and the one that I want to weld to. Right click OK because I'm done selecting material. Now, in this case, I could draw a weld wherever I want, and the system's going to go ahead and place the weld there. I'm just going to add a weld right along the top. I'm going to use my vertex point for the first point, vertex point for the second point. Now, for this case, to finish, you have to hit the middle button OK, as indicated at the top left of the screen. Now here we're going to use a pre-qualified weld. Let's just type in TCU4B-GF and I want to perform a chamfer on this particular material. We will see that there is a chamfer. If you look closely there's a chamfer. I can answer yes or no. It's prompting me at the top left of the screen. I'll say yes. Go ahead and hit OK the change option screen and we can see now that the system has chamfered the material and added in the weld. Yes, in this case the weld is added. This is a problem that we've had in this recent release right here, but it is being fixed and the chamfer will the weld will rotate back into the correct position. Nonetheless, in the detail, it will be indicated that there's a weld there. This now completes the weld video.